Hi, uh, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm really, really super excited to be out here to shoot this. We're going to be testing out a Ruger 44 Mac carbine uh, with a man liquor stock. <laughs> yeah, I need to grow up a little bit. But um, that's actually what this is called. Um, this is actually a consignment piece at our shop right now. We had a gentleman bring this in. He wants to sell it for him. And uh, surprisingly enough, it's still sitting at the shop. I think it looks great. I've been wanting to shoot this since it came in. Nobody's picked it up yet, so today we're going to test it out and shoot it. We're going to do a little video on it. Um, did some research on it, not a whole lot, uh, but this is not common. This is a little more uncommon, made for international sales. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll let um, the gunsmith talk a little more about that. I, I know he knows a lot more about this, but I just want to shoot it and see how it goes. All right, so uh, we'll get the range set up. Get on out there, get this thing loaded up, and we'll get some cycles through it and see how it shoots. All right. All right, so out here on the range, uh, looking forward to this. This, uh, been looking forward to shooting this ever since it came to the shop. Uh, it's very, very cool looking. Uh, hopefully it shoots as good as it looks. But let's uh, let's find out. All right, let's take the safety off and do this. Okay, stays open on the last shot. Uh, yeah, that's uh, very fun looking. I, I just don't know if you can see it or not, but I just missed the target on my first shot. And it's 44 mag, so it took a nice little chunk out of that tree. Sorry, tree. Um, but yeah, this thing shoots great. Uh, it's awesome. Let me... Uh, Let's, let me show you how this thing loads. It's pretty cool how it uh, loads loads the initial round. We'll, we'll put a couple more rounds through it just to make sure we're good. But uh, let's see. All right, so that's your gate. Got a little latch right here. You just got to push down, and then this will drop in. So let's go and do that. Then you got that. Might want to slow that down to take a look at that. Uh, that's for this old safety since we got a lot of round in there. But uh, yeah, that's that's really cool. It, it it it's pointed down. It flicks it up and then pushes it right on in. And you close the action. That is so cool. As you probably could count. Here it's uh one in the pipe, four in the mag, so you got five five got your five rounds. And let's uh let's go ahead and uh take five more cracks at it because you know I didn't miss that one shot. 18 inch barrel uh shouldn't have. I guess it's a little too excited. Just shoot. This is, this is, I really, really like this. It's so cool. Alright. Alright. That is, that is, that is, that is really nice. The, the one negative is, it is Remington ammo, so, Remington FMJ cheap ammo, so, yeah. Got some powder on me. And being left handed, I can see well, if you got some dirty powder, it can might get a little bit kicked back up in your face. But you know, this is this is built for deer hunting, so you got you know Hornady or, or some type of better ammunition in there. Better quality gunpowder burns better, so shouldn't have that problem at all if you're 
got hunting rounds in it and you're you're shooting but this this uh, shoots as good as it looks it's uh oh man I really really like this uh, you know if this sits around the shop for another month or so I might just have to pick this on up <laughs> I'm gonna take this on home with me and buy this one uh, yeah this this video might not come out for a couple weeks <laughs> but yeah all right, well, uh, that's going to do it for the shooting. Uh, we're going to take this back to the shop. Uh, we'll, let, we'll let the gunsmith break this down a little bit more. He'll, he'll, he'll know a little bit more about this. We'll let Ricky take a look at it, uh, explain it a little more. And, um, yeah, hopefully he's impressed with it as much as I am. To get him to test the trigger out, too. It's, it's uh, I don't know. It, it's got a lot of room there, but uh, the trigger's... I would I would let Ricky take a look at it and see if he could do anything to soften it up, especially especially if it's going to be for a uh, hunting rifle, which it would be if I owned it. But all right, thank you for watching, and uh, see you back at the shop. Hey folks, welcome back to the shop. Hope you enjoyed the uh, shooting video from our Ruger 44 carbine. And here we have that lovely little firearm that is made in the USA. This is the first rifle that Bill Ruger was able to produce. In 1961, it was manufactured all the way up until 1985. Okay. Before we go any deeper, let's we'll go ahead and, and check our chamber and do a little bit of uh, testing here. We'll talk about the cleaning situation before we go any further. Anyway, we're looking at in our we'll put a camera down in our chamber. We see we have empty empty chamber and we have an empty magazine tube. In this case, our magazine tube is a a tube under the uh, stock. All right. And to clean the gun, as typically, we would run our solvent patch all around the inside of the chamber here and run a patch down through the barrel. We'll just let it sit for five minutes or so. We'll come back with a clean, dry patch to wipe out anything that the solvent has, has uh, loosened up for us. And we'll finish it up with a little light film of uh, lubrication. Uh, personally, I prefer some thin th synthetic lubrication especially for firearms that you're going to be hunting with simply because it does not cause you as nearly as much problems in the winter time when you're out in the cold weather the synthetic is not nearly as susceptible to being an issue with uh, being sticky or, or thick during the winter time right <clears throat> it definitely is a superior lubricant than some of the older uh, standard lightweight oils that uh, we're used to from from years past All right okay a little more about the gun itself the, uh, there was almost a quarter million of these guns made, several different versions. The very first version in 1961 was uh, come out and it was named the Deer Stalker. The Deer Stalker was, was labeled or stamped onto the receiver. It would have been, I believe, stamped onto the receiver on the left side. I've never seen one, honestly, but I think that's where it would be. Is it that or on top of the receiver anyway? But it was only made for one year because the Ithaca Company at the time had a, a shotgun of very closely to the same name. So uh, they got a little, to a little conflict about that and Ruger just decided to drop the Deerstalker name. After that, it was uh, named just the Ruger Carbine and eventually evolved into the 44 Carbine is what we know now. There were several different versions of this rifle. Uh, the standard version would have been the R, uh, well standard version, I guess you say, was been the, the uh, standard version. You have an RS version which has a rear peep sight and a uh, sling swivel already mounted from the factory. There's a sporter version, which has a Monte Carlo style stock, and, uh, which had, and both of the sporter and the RS version and the standard version, the stock will be cut off right here where this barrel band is. Okay? And the version we have here is called the international version. It is uh, styled with a man liquor stock, full length stock. <clears throat> Very attractive piece. And this one is, other than the uh, original deer stalker that was made only one year, this one is the most desirable as far as collector goes. There are very few made of these with the man liquor full length stock. Right, and it's really a nice piece of walnut also. Very attractive firearm. Alrighty. Let's take a, a little closer look as far as the mechanical part of this gun. We uh, typically would load a round into the chamber. We'll drop our cartridge down into here. We can hit push a button under the receiver and the bolt will close 
now we have a loaded chamber. We would, uh, to load the gun further, we would press down on our latch here. This gate drops down. We can then insert four more 44 Magnum cartridges into the magazine tube. Right. <clears throat> so the gun has a five shot total capacity. One in the chamber and four in your magazine. Right. We also have, uh, I like the fact that it has a fairly uh, spacious trigger guard in front of the trigger. Uh, because in the wintertime, you think about you're going to be using, most likely in the wintertime, you're hunting deer in, in the cold weather, you're going to possibly have gloves on. You will need something that has a little extra space around your trigger guard so that you can uh, access the trigger and be able to feel it without having to fumble with uh, a tight uh, trigger guard around your, uh, you know, on your bottom of your gun. So this one has enough space to do that. It's not an issue. But I uh, tell you what, let's go ahead and we'll do the trigger pull test now and see what we end up with. I'm not sure what this gun is like. I know it is as original, it's not been modified at all. So we'll do a little tug on it and see what we get. And six pounds, right at six pounds here. That's uh, not ideal probably for hunting, but in the winter time, I guess if it's uh, in cold weather, you may want to have a little bit more resistance for the fact that uh, you may not be as, your fingers may not be as sensitive if you've gotten kind of half frozen there. I'm going to check it, check it too with my, my bare fingers here in uh, the warm environment we're in today and see what it feels like uh, for myself anyways. I like the face of the trigger. It feels nice and smooth. It's wide. You have plenty of, of surface area on the trigger. But it is a bit heavy. Yeah, I would prefer something a little lighter than that myself. I like around a, around a three pound trigger for a hunting gun. So, uh, that probably could be modified, I think, if we had, if I had this gun myself personally, we would probably uh, do a little massaging on, a, on the trigger situation and make it a little better. Um, anyways, let's go on to something else. I'll tell you, the, as far as the specs on the gun, we have an 18 and a half inch barrel. All right, and let's look at our length of pull. Let's put our, our tape measure here and take a look what we have. That's 13 and a half inch length of pull. All righty. And this was the, a lot of people know when they come in the store, I say this is granddaddy for the, for the Ruger 1022, which is very popular. It's probably the most, most popular 22 long rifle uh, semi-automatic there is in the country. And uh, a lot of people, first, first time they see this, they thought it was a Ruger 1022 because of the way the receiver is, is smooth and, and enclosed up here. This is, uh, I guess you say, the, the granddaddy for the Ruger uh, 1022. Yeah, Ruger, the 1022 started in 1964 but it got a lot of its styling cues and its mechanical uh, um, design from this original carbine model. <clears throat> All right. and as far as the, uh, the caliber of the gun itself, the 44 Magnum, I'm gonna touch on some options you have for the, uh, for the 44 Magnum, because this gun originally was uh, thought of as being a uh, in the woods deer hunting kind of gun, maybe even black bear. So the 44 Magnum, cartridge is sufficient for that. We have a couple options here I want to show you. This is a typical, um, this is a Fiocchi, what is this? Uh, 240 grain, jacket is soft point bullet. It's typical what I would use at the range maybe for some target shooting. And we go over to some more effective rounds for hunting. We have the uh, Winchester Super X, 210 grain. This is a silver tip hollow point. It's what uh, Winchester calls it. Good for deer and black bear. You see this is a 210 grain bullet and it travels about 1250 feet per second. Then we're going over to some more, a little bit more modern take. We have the Hornady uh, Lever Revolution ammo, 225 grain bullet. It's traveling at a little over 1400 feet per second in muzzle velocity. You think about that, you have a heavier bullet from Hornady that is traveling faster than the lighter bullet from Winchester simply because of the, the powder, the different powder that Hornady uses, and also the tip of the bullet. The shape of the bullet here is the, their famous polymer tip. It's a little more aerodynamic than just the open hollow point would be. So it actually flies flatter also. You'll get a little bit more distance out of it before the bullet starts to drop. And very effective. I use these same bullets myself in a 35 Remington caliber uh, lever action rifle, and uh, they do a real good job on stopping the, uh, the deer. <laughs> Definitely a good grocery getter right there. Um, anyway, a couple other things I want to mention about the uh, Ruger themselves. Uh, Ruger is the top 
producer by volume wise of uh, manufacturing firearms of anybody in the country. And they're the second uh, most prolific as far as rifles go. So they've been in the business for a long time, but they make, they make a lot of different versions of firearms. And uh, to me, I think that most of the Ruger products are, I want to say, uh, a working man's kind of gun. They're made typically made very solid. Uh, I like the older version of myself like this. I like the, uh, I have several versions of the uh, M77 uh, bolt action rifles. And uh, to me, it's just a very solid product for a good price without being extra fancy, but it does a good job. Anyway, hope that uh, enlightened you a little bit about the, maybe the history of Ruger, and especially this fine looking uh, man liquor style carbine 44 we have here. Thanks for watching uh, Maverick Gun Works and hope y'all catch us next time.